Thank you, Colonel Pillay, and uh, Jai Hind to all of you. Uh, firstly, it's an honor to be on the same stage as so many uh, distinguished and accomplished people who are here. While I am going to talk about role of intelligence in counterterrorism, let me also cover the portion of uh, the two and a half front war that we always talk of. And when we say that these are the burning issues today, I would like to compliment the organizers for this webinar for choosing such a brilliant, uh, such a topic and uh, attracting so much of brilliance here on this forum. When you say you are the Indic Researchers Forum, so it would be quite appropriate for me to touch upon our Indic history. And that is where we must see, are we facing this two and a half front threat for the first time in our history? Not necessarily. We've had many occasions when India has, or the Indic kingdoms have been having such threats. And at times we have uh, been fooled into complacency and we've seen the way Vijayanagar Empire just crumbled because of the five Deccan states uh, combining together and uh, the Battle of Talikota, where the entire kingdom just crumbled. But then followed the generation of Shivaji and the Marathas who learned their lessons of how to handle deftly multi-front, multi-domain threats and then using diplomacy and intelligence, they were able to overcome the various threats, whether they were from the Mughals who were at Baranpur, whether they were the Nizam Shahi from Ahmednagar, whether the Qutub Shahi uh, and whether it was the Adil Shahi and uh, all these they were able to handle while there were threats which were being posed by the Portuguese as well as the English. So it's a question of retaining your composure, having a strategic thought process, having a strategic culture in the country and ensuring that each and every citizen is involved as a stakeholder for the national security. When I give this example from history, let me take you to recent times when you see Israel as a country where each and every citizen is involved in the intelligence collaboration for the good of the country. Now, somebody may say that, look, they have a culture where conscription is the order of the day. And because of that, uh, they ensure that uh, they have contribution and collaboration from each and every uh, citizen. Yes, that is true. But we are a very ancient civilization and when we are a civilization, we know exactly what is good for us and what is bad for us. We've had over a century of or more than uh, a thousand years where we were either invaded or colonized and we've suffered those uh, brutal periods where we nearly lost everything. But what we retained, we definitely retained our self-esteem and today where we are, we can say that the Indic culture has not allowed us to fade off. And whether we had leaders, whether we had weak leaders, whether we had good leaders, we continue to uh, remain as a civilization and here we are. Now, today, if we are looking at a two and a half front and that half front is essentially the terrorism that we are talking of. But remember that this terrorism has had enough scars on us post-independence. Now, when we talk of asymmetric threats from our adversaries, it's not of recent origin, although many of the research scholars may not agree with me, but take back your mind to 1947, when the Kashmir Valley was being raided by the Lashkars. And what do you make of the Lashkars? Fine, they were supported and they were propped up by the Pakistan military. But at the same time, when you talk of Lashkars, that is the asymmetric capability, which Pakistan has perfected till date and that is the reason uh, they have been able to create enough nuisance value and enough importance for the superpowers to remain relevant in the region. So you have terrorism as a stated policy, not couched in so many words, but definitely the intent is the terrorism 
as is depicted where we lost a prime minister we lost an ex prime minister we had a parliament attack we had a red fort attack we had many religious places attacked so you in a sense have an entire generation or many generations who know what exactly is uh, has been done to us now in contemporary and futuristic environment this terrorism is not only in the physical domain now terrorism is coming in the technological field where we look at information warfare we look at the kind of cyber warfare and whether we call it or not but we all been going through this threat and this malaise of bio threat the bio warfare so you have enough reason to believe that this terrorism is not going to reduce it is going to continue so what should be our responses the first thing is the entire country's resolve is visible so our country has proved it on more than one occasion whether it was the delhi attacks whether it was the bombay bomb blast or whether it was the 2611 wherever it was there is a resolve in the people which has been exhibited more than once so that is the most important thing when you need a country to stand on its feet even if it has been punched many times from many directions but then comes the question then why is the country not in a position to say that every citizen is a stakeholder in the intelligence maybe because we have inherited a colonial system of governance and in that we have certain structures which have been tasked to look after intelligence so very briefly external intelligence is looked after by rnaw the internal intelligence is looked after by the intelligence bureau and intelligence bureau incidentally is the oldest and was the only intelligence agency rnaw came only after the 1962 and 65 war and rnaw did marvelously well in uh, 1971 each of the service headquarter of the armed forces have their own intelligence organization and we added something and we empowered them and that is where mr devi prasad is here and i know for sure the kind of excellent work that dri did under the three uh, director generals that i worked with and i know the kind of value that got added to intelligence and that put pakistan on a back foot and more of it when uh, mr devi prasad speaks so there we are here looking at the various dimensions of intelligence now for various dimensions of national security when you talk of national security physical security is one you definitely need intelligence you look at the agricultural security or the food security you need intelligence there you have water security you have energy security you have the technological security you have the information security you name a thing and you have that security as a part of the comprehensive national security and that is where intelligence is required in each and every department and ministry and if we do not have this kind of a thought process whether it is in the government official who is just pushing one file or in a person who is heading that organization we will generally be found lacking as a people we do not stumble so hard that we give up we immediately bounce back whether it is related to information security cyber security or space security or the bio security we immediately get our act together the only problem with us has been that we've never been able to understand the dimensions of intelligence and the kind of collaborative approach that is required many a time whenever there is a setback you would have heard uh, there was an intelligence failure now it is good to sensationalize this and the kind of media structure that we have uh, everyone wants information and a kind of sensationalization of news which is most suitable for the trp culture and for increasing the publications and the circulations of newspapers so many a time if the intelligence failure has been given out uh, the intelligence community normally will not be coming out and defending itself it it is the silent operator who will just keep operating and will not even come and negate the feeling that has been circulated many a time there have been intelligence failures 
and people have taken corrective action whoever was in power around that time like i said 62 65 after that rnaw came up so that was an organizational structure after the kargil war we had uh, the defense intelligence agency coming up and we had the ntro coming up so what does that mean we immediately realized that the organizational structures need to be modified or recreated thereafter after a few years again in the last about 4 years or so we've got the defense cyber agency and the defense space agency which have come up so overall i feel that we are very good at identifying mistakes maybe a bit later and we come up with organizational structures but i have a problem here i think what is required is not to stop at creating organizations but to simplify processes the processes of being able to interact within the intelligence community are still uh, bereft with the kind of turf battle that we face now technology has come up i think now lies the answer in how to integrate these intelligence agencies with the help of technology where human intelligence technical intelligence and any other form of intelligence can be fused together so that the end result is synergized and there i would like to tell you that a lot of work has happened and that is going on and in fact colonel pille himself was there when we started doing that and we have we are nearly there when we can say that we'll have a platform and we'll have the digital connect where the assessments from one agency will be shared by the other let me also come up here where the roots of terrorism are so widely spread that they are in the internal domain as well as from the external front as well now our defense diplomacy while it is called diplomacy also plays some kind of a role in getting intelligence and supporting the effort of rnaw also so there again we all come up together and bring the best to the table and the national security council secretariat is one place where we get the intelligence the diplomacy the internal governance all on one particular platform and enable a decision making which is based on knowledge not information there is a difference between information intelligence and knowledge and that is what i think the young researchers must focus on that when you say role of intelligence in combating terrorism it is not combating terrorism it is actually preventing terrorism and if we are able to prevent terrorism the country's development takes place at a faster pace and the stronger you get the better you get and you are able to deter people who would try to do mischief whether from the external front or whether from the internal domain now the internal domain is something which actually worries me most uh, within the military or even in the government we are very good at doing an external environmental scan and i always jokingly say because that is the easiest to do but the moment we look at the internal scan we are on shaky ground because in a democracy there are many sensitivities which intelligence agencies are unable to cross and when they are unable to cross they will not be able to speak about them so the sharing also becomes that much more difficult but i think in the years to come we will have to be more particular about an internal scan and role of intelligence in internal scan will have to be much more stringent much more penetrating and should be able to cover with the expertise in multi domains earlier a human resource or a human intelligence was considered to be on the model of james bond that you saw in the cold war era but that's no more valid you need people who are technologically so advanced that they may not be in field but they would be in the dark net they would be on the internet the entire digital space would be scanned the capabilities would not necessarily come from a hunk who's a six footer but maybe from a couch potato who would be doing things and uh, he would pass off as somebody as innocent as a small young boy in the neighborhood but i think that is the kind of uh, manning of intelligence organizations that we will have to do and that is applicable for the civilian intelligence agencies as well as the military intelligence agencies where we will have to work out different uh, manning patterns different protocols different standing operating procedures 
and we should be at least way ahead now here i would like to tell you there is plenty of human talent in the technological field there is tremendous amount of commitment in the human intelligence field so there is only a need for a mature leadership and a mature citizenry who come together and ensure that the country is not put back by many years by allowing terrorism to succeed now terrorism succeeds on many fronts a diverse culture a diverse kind of a background that our country has and the kind of kind of democratic setup we have can never be compared with the setup that exists in pakistan or in china in china it is absolutely an iron hand which controls the entire lot of people and the intelligence it is available and the counter intelligence is also ensured that nothing would leak a similar situation exists to our west where pakistan also does the same thing because is there the deep state is the pakistan army isi and the clerics so nothing will escape there but in a country like india or in a country like united states of america we have our own challenges because we've chosen the kind of government that we want and we still want to continue with that which necessarily means that for us the answers or the solutions or the remedies cannot be those which are available in other countries we will have to customize our own solutions and that is where i always face a challenge when i talk in the open source media how much to reveal and how much to give out with that i would like to stop and i will take questions in the uh, subsequent session thank you and jai hind